<sighs> I need you to be very strong right now, okay? After discussing it, your mother and I have decided that it's time I reboot my Windows. That I reinstall everything, set it up again, deep load it. And as a result, some of my recording settings are not how they should be. <laughs> hello everybody, hello. So I did talk about the fact that there is a democratic Germany that can completely mess up the world order. So today we are going to turn the world into flames very early, very quickly. And then of course bring peace and stability to the first world order. But first, I already made that joke, didn't I? We need to research. Since we have Mifo builds, we are going to try and build a few mill factories. And as always, just focus on uh, uh, guns. So we have 50 pp. <laughs> well, what are we gonna do? We are going to spike the world tension. We are going to go for Rhineland mainly to get the pp. Also a juicy amount of war support. Yeah, I switched to newer version of Windows so now I can do this and it's a little bit strange. Another fun thing I found out. If somebody embargoes you, there is a very easy reason to get rid of the embargo. You just declare war on them. We declared war on the US. Now we are at war with a major, which means our justifications are insanely quick. Just 25 days. If you want to, you can mess up the entire world order very quickly now. But for now, we will just justify on Turkey. Okay, that's valid. Valid, that's valid. That is a problem that can occur if the allies start guaranteeing someone. Honestly, the only problem is France. If the UK guarantees someone, just declare war on them, it doesn't matter. France is the problem here. Honestly, it's such a fun strat. If you've not played this, I highly recommend it. It's just so ridiculous. And a very fun thing that happens when you justify on the US, you can just see your war support go up every few seconds simply because the world tension spikes so incredibly much. The old system was also very fun, where if you justify on the US, you just get 70% world tension immediately. This time I will get Halder. I'll not get Kesselging for now, and then we'll just see where this goes. Deck on the US, lose our MIFO bills. We can switch away from mill factories to SIF factories. Then we can utilize domestic film industry. I'm gonna try and see if I can mess with the allies a little bit. Ew, yes. Thank you, France. That's definitely worthy of a save. This is the only thing that's a little bit finicky about it. This whole guaranteeing thing from the allies can mess you up. UK, that's very fine. I like to see that. I like to see the UK guaranteeing Turkey. So long as it's not France, I'm very... Yes, this is perfect. Just a quick reminder. You can see Sweden, Romania and Cuba is embargoing us. We're gonna declare war on Romania. Romania joins. Romania is no longer embargoing us. Editor here, he's rambling again. It makes sense that they no longer embargo you. You can't trade with them anyway, but if you peace out, the embargo is still gone and that might be useful in certain cases. You can also easily do all of this in Iron Man, which makes this even more ridiculous. You can also justify on China, declare on them and let China join the allies. You're at war with Japan in 1937. I've tried this and the allies pretty much just lose in China for whatever reason. And also then communist China will join the Soviet Union and they will declare war on China and yeah. The game goes down a very chaotic spree and since you are still democratic, you can't really do anything. So I didn't really enjoy it. It was a bit boring. Why are you guaranteeing them? I'm already at war with you, UK. Okay, you just have too much PP, I guess. We still want Goebbels. We want a better conscription law and then also total mo. For now, I will just let this whole thing sit, stir a little bit. And then we can continue expanding the allies. That is honestly the quickest way to unite someone. <laughs> just have a common enemy. Okay, extensive conscription. And then we can justify on Austria. If France guarantees them, then this is somewhat fine. Like it's not a huge problem, but France is your biggest problem. Which is topical since you are Germany. <laughs> Declare war on Austria. Why do I say that 
France is your biggest problem. If France joins against you, then they will take a lot of land and from my attempts, the only actual threat to this threat is France taking land. The UK won't take land, Austria will take land, Austria does not matter. Greece is using its claim on Albania, which always ends up the same way. Greece beats up Albania, annexes Albania. Italy beats up Greece, annexes Greece, releases Albania. If possible, I would like to get the French into the Allies as well, but it... Mm, yes, there we go. This is perfect, absolutely stellar, because as I said, now there's this beautiful block of allies. The US is in them, France and the UK is in them. We also have a few Balkan members in them and Hitler is gone. Austria took three states. The Democratic Party Zentrum has been put in power in German Republic. We have 76% war support, 84% stability. France has 55% war support. The UK has 60% war support. The US has 45% war support in 1937. This is the face of a man who knows what he did and it's only gonna get worse. You might say, okay, Austria took three of our core states, that's pretty bad. It's not because we can join the allies now. You also saw that the Anschluss has been bypassed, which is such a shame. We can't get Austria as Germany anymore. We lose cores. Or do we? <laughs> yes, that's what I was banking on because in my testing this event also sometimes just takes, I think there's a mean time to happen of two months. Sadly, we lose out on the two building slots here, uh, the two SIF factories here and the free infrastructure, but we get Austria and Tyrol. Boom! Lesser German solution was a mistake. Austria read my message. Lower Austria, Upper Austria and Tyrol is now a core of German Republic. Same as for Alberg. We annex Austria. You can also see we bypassed Align Hungary and Align Romania. This was also the reason why we justified and declared war on Romania and Hungary, since we need those two in our faction to integrate war economies. Keep in mind, we still have total mobile right now and we need to demobilize to war economy, but that's fine. And fun thing, if you're a democratic country, relief of command is absolutely busted. 25% army XP gain. Yes, sir, please, sir. In 1947, we have Romania, Hungary as puppets. We have Anschluss. Everything's coming up for Germany. As you can also see, another fun thing. We can improve our national spirits. We can add triumphant will. The only requirements are that we or our faction members control London and Paris, which well, we do, but we're not really triumphant. 100 of those horses, we don't have to demobilize. Carl, you are banned. I am never gonna use him again as a leader, straight up. He lost me 1 million men the last time. I'm never gonna forgive him for that, you know? Seriously, the most hilarious thing about this whole strat is we are in the Allies, so we can just wreak havoc through Europe with our focus tree and the UK absolutely despises us, but they are still willing to have us in their faction. I just love it, man. It's perfect. I couldn't have wished for a better Christmas present. It's May. Right now, 1% of our factories is used for consumer goods. Oh, yes, man, I just... Oh, it tickles me. Once again, it, it's just... Oh. In another strat that I did, Greece joined the Allies and then Italy... We were at war with Italy and I got Italy as well. This was so fun. Like, <laughs> I just had Europe, Europe, Europe under my boot. Just wasn't very fun in the end game, you know, since I can't really do anything anymore as a democratic nation. But we're not bound to the weak wills of democracy because we're an old nation. If Italy would flip to democratic, then they can only stay democratic. But we are based, we can also flip to communism. Oh, I just, I just realized something very important. We're in a race against time. A big bear will want to take a few bits of my Romania. I want to keep those bits. I'll just build in Romania and annex them. London surrender for whatever reason. I don't think London surrendered in this timeline. For 150 pp. The entire staff, that's so cool. Honestly, if they keep on adding flavor things like this, then I can't even see democratic nations being fun. Although I would really like 
to declare war on people in a war game. We don't really need to annex Hungary, but I might as well get them now because we will need aluminium soon. Belgium joined the allies? Why did you? In terms of our focus tree, we pretty much have everything we would ever want, so we can go for Danziger War. Yeah, let's uh, extend this front line a little bit, just a smidge, please. I'm sorry, but I have to interrupt this episode for just a second. <coughs> Trans rights are human rights. Be whoever the fuck you want to be. Okay, we can move on. Another fun thing, we can intervene in civil wars. I think that's a democratic thing, but it's just strange because both of these also have democratic leaders. Now, the British guarantee them, but it doesn't matter to me. The British are my friends. They allow me just to just ravage Europe. It's surely not gonna backfire. Right? Declare war on Poland. I'm also just gonna auto this. I don't care. Ooh, France wants to give me guns. Yes, please. And then let's annex Romania. They could get the three factories here and the 24 oil, but I also don't wanna... Yeah, I just don't wanna bother with it. I'm gonna take all of Poland myself, then we can move on to the Niederlande and Luxembourg. And I lost eight divisions. Ireland joins the Allies. Whoa. I gotta be quick here. Else Luxembourg and the Netherlands is gonna join the Allies. We are going to take all of the Netherlands. We are going to take all of the Dutch East Indies. And all of the... Oh, wait a minute. Uh, I think we just have to take the Dutch East Indies like that. That's pretty much all the expanding we can do. Except for Bulgaria and Bulgaria, Greece, Italy, Belgium, France and Switzerland. Everything else in Central Europe is ours. We just went down here unopposed. It's so cool. Oh, we can never annex this Dutch East Indies because you're a supervised state. That's so cringe. What? And I can't even drain their... Oh my god, I can't even drain their uh, points. Ugh, the manpower. Can I refund the, the few boats I got from the from the Dutch are not worth that. The game is just constantly reminding why democracies are not fun in Hearts of Iron 4. Oh, and we're democratic, we can't g do collaboration governments. Let's make the most out of the Dutch East Indies that we can. Which also means... Ooh, 500,000 manpower, yes please. Engines free, that means it's go time. We can finally build something useful. Yo, Dutch East Indies. Ah, that's actually, ugh. We only get 10? That's so bad. Ah, he is only a naval bomber. He's no longer a naval bomber airframe. This guy is a naval bomber because I, I think it's just some Mongol joke because the Mongols failed so miserably at invading the Japanese. And then Paradox just gave him a naval bomber trait so you can invade Japan. Like, I think that's the entire premise of this trade. He used to be a naval bomber and then when By Blood Alone came out they introduced the airframes. They probably just reused the name that he has somewhere else as a constant variable. So when By Blood Alone came out he became a naval bomber airframe. No, we will not give up our territory without a fight. So if you want to take it, come and get it. Also, why do I have two horses in here? They didn't get a war goal against me. <laughs> that event doesn't work. Oh, I love your Paradox, man. Just every single time. It's it's always a pleasure working with Paradox. Japan is just a thing against us. Okay, can I get you? Actually, wait a minute. If they declare war on me, that's also fine. Then I can mobilize. Yeah, defensive war. I'll take it. I'm not even gonna get rid of the Dutchies in these. Wait, what? Why did you... Okay, uh, just rush, boys. And then get these puppies out. I think it's just Ethiopia called us in. I don't know how that works. I think at some point Ethiopia can call you in. But we need to take as much land as we can, push as much. For I want to get Italy myself. I need to get Italy for myself. You know, it's part of my collection, part of my Europe set. We can't have Europe without Italy, you know, it's the Roman Empire. Perhaps the most important bit of the Roman set. The uh, European set. But it should be fine since I should be able to push with these boys. I forgot about the thing. Women in the workforce, yes. And we can even go down, go up to service by requirement if we want to. Oh, but I think I'll just take this. Yeah, I do have the industry myself. I just take it. That's why I do, so I don't have to um, occupy it. Oh my, some of you are getting uppity. So let's just start rooting out resistance, I guess. Just because we're at war, they are getting some ideas. Wait, 
Oh, that's, that's the Belgian troops that we got. I was very confused why I got Romanian troops in Africa after I annexed Romania. There we go. Goodbye. Wow, they don't they don't like me anymore. I lost like, like 600,000 in uh, garrison manpower from Indonesia. Thank you, Raj. Fix that. Boom. Now we are the allies. And with this, a very fun thing happens. If you take over a faction, then you are bound to the faction rules. So if a fascist Germany joins the allies and then becomes the leader of the allies, the allies will still be a democratic faction. However, if you become an alternative ideology after you become the leader of a faction, then the faction will flip with you. I forgot about something. Yeah, I never upgraded these guns. Ugh. Wait a minute, we could justify on the Soviets earlier, and also in Italy, huh? I'm very confused, what, what, what? Why could we justify on the Soviets just now? That's such a cool thing, you superpower the allies so incredibly hard by just unlocking the entire focus tree at the beginning, they could also mob up very early. The US is just part of them, you can just invite pretty much anybody in the... <gasps> Oh god, thank god. If I click that button, I'll have to take Italy in the peace deal, and I don't want that. I just want to take Italy after the peace, so after the peace treaty. What? You submitted to Manchuko? Why? Yo, Italy is spamming so many divisions. <laughs> to be fair, they only have like five divisions. Yeah, four infantry in them. They're not very expensive, but it's just annoying. I think it's time to say goodbye to Slovakia. Let's see what the Soviets can do. Okay, they can do. They can do quite a bit. Uh, let's get our crappy defend the German heartland. <laughs> yeah, I like to see that. How many planes do the Soviets have? 6,000. Well, I'm gonna change that. I mean, this changes rapidly at this rate. It's just so fun to use airplanes, honestly. Like, this, the Soviets wanted to push me, and then they realized they can't because my fighters are shredding theirs. And now they're just standing there. I'll take Minsk. That's the only pushing I will do this early on, just for the supply up here. This way, we'll know it's not this stressed out. Oh, yep. Something like that I was expecting, since I don't have ships up. I've already killed 8,000 planes. We should have killed the entire Soviet stockpile at this point. A few of those planes were probably from the Italians as well, since we're still at war with Japan. That's just so fun, man. This poor Soviet division. Just send in there without any backup. Where are my... Cas, get in here, do some cast damage, and then let's fight. Now we just need to hold, and then they will slowly run out of org. And I'm tempted to retake that airport, but they're also just, they're just serving their planes up on a plate. Like, I have no desire to retake this place. The Soviets have shot down 1.7 thousand planes at this point, whereas I've killed at least 10,000 Soviet planes. Although it's probably more like 13,000. You got some Barbarossa buffs? I never knew. You only get that if you do the war with the USSR focus, which I've not done once in my life before this point. And then you have half a year to push to the Archangel's Astrakhan line. And if you do so, you get to keep the bar buff until you peace out with the Soviets. Which is pretty cool, I suppose. But they could also write that down in the focus. I always thought it was just a basic war goal. Oh god! <laughs> he did not see that. I did not see that at all. Um, okay. Let's just send you boys over here. With haste, please. 500 fighters left. I think at this point, I'm fine with putting my cast on auto. Can we take some Italian land, please? I can take this. I'm honestly fine. Would be cool if Italy doesn't lose all of their stuff. But I don't think Italy has any points. Yes! Oh no! Oh, uh, somewhere in this block, there's... Let's do some damage then. Got the logistics down here a little bit. I don't think it's ever gonna get old. Just seeing this number of supply fulfillment drop down. And what's he gonna do? He only has 100 planes. Uh, almost 1 million for 80,000. Flip to communist. Do a few raids. Press censorship. As I promised, we can just justify now. Let's clear out this pocket. <laughs> We're just overrunning them. Let's make a small push. Oh, that's a lot of green. 
I blitzed so hard in this game, it almost did not matter that there's no troops on the Crimean border. God, planes are so busted in this game. Like, you definitely don't need them to win, but man, if you just chuck down a few planes here and there, this whole game just breaks, at least against the AI. Eh, while my army fights, I think I will do one of the more fun things of Barbarossa, which is figuring out supply. We can definitely push without supply here. You know what, I'm gonna push through here and then just build a port. It's gonna make all of this easier if I can ever get there. <laughs> Yeah, it's the flame tanks, the flame support tanks. They don't have any oil, so they are just incredibly atrociously slow. Two micro offensives here, and then also the port down here, and the entire Caucasus front just broke. Doesn't look like anybody thought of building roads in Iran. Wow, the Swiss have embargoed us. That's, oh, that must sting. Oh. Almost have conquered the penis. Mm, let's go up here. This way, the railroad is interrupted and the supply hub is useless. No, I had. No. I was having fun. I was just focused on the game because there was so much microing to do. Just in an incredibly fun and stupid strat if you ever feel like going for this. Like, you just get dunked on by the allies and then they turn you into a democratic country and then you can just wreak havoc. At this point, I could just, I could have kicked France from this faction and then justified on them and boom, then we can get France and then I can do the same thing for the UK and the same thing for the US and so on and so forth. Like, it's so fun, so stupid. Because you just, you just annex all of Europe without anybody being able to say anything about you. The only one that could do something about us is the UK and they're not gonna kick you. I recommend this strat, it's so fun. Do it at least once, you don't have to flip to communism obviously. This is just if you want to actually do something afterwards. Nobody suspects a thing, huh?